Welcome everyone to Palm Sunday, also known as the Sunday of the Passion. In Christian churches all over the world, services begin by celebrating Christ's triumphal arrival into Jerusalem, waving their palms and singing. That reminds me of Palm Sunday at St. Bede's. We used to stand out on our patio and get palms for ourselves and get all in line, and we made our own triumphal march, waving our palms and singing, All glory, laud, and honor to thee, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children make sweet hosannas sing. Yes, and after that we sang, Ride on, ride on in majesty, hark all the tribes, hosannas cry, O Savior, meek pursue thy road, with palms and scattered garments strode. Then the service progresses. This is Palm Sunday. Yes, it is. Then we ride into Holy Week. And so now listen up because these are the readings for the week. Hello, St. Beads. Father Joe again. It's been a long while since I've been with you. Uh, due to some medical problems of the family and so on. It's not because I don't love you. It's just haven't been able to do it. But anyway, here we are. And um, let me read the colic for today, which is Palm Sunday. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Old Testament lesson from Isaiah chapter 50 Verses 4 through 9a. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I am not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for Palm Sunday is Psalm 118, 1 through 2, and 19 through 29. Join along with us. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna, Lord, Hosanna. Lord, send us now success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We will bless you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord. He has shined upon us. From a procession from branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. The epistle is from Philippians chapter 2, 
verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's Gospel for Palm Sunday is Matthew chapter 27. Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he did not answer. When Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail! King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put on his clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene called Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they offered him wine to drink, mixed with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and the elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. 
Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sapachthami, this is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come and save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom. The earth shook, and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now, when the centurion and those with him, who were keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Hello, my name is Father Alexander Har. I'm the rector of St. Vincent's Episcopal Church here in St. Petersburg, and it's my privilege and pleasure to be sharing a Holy Week reflection on this Palm Sunday. Years ago, I used to love riding on roller coasters. My favorite is called Millennium Force and it's located at a famous roller coaster park known as Cedar Point. It is 310 feet tall, which is five feet taller than the Statue of Liberty, and at its fastest travels 93 miles per hour. There's no words I can use to describe the experience of riding this roller coaster. You just have to be there for yourself in that car. Now my two favorite parts of this ordeal are first, when you have anticipation as you're coming up to the top, and then, of course, on the way back to the station when you realize that this thing is actually over. I think it's a ride that changes how you see the world after you've been on it. As a person who's afraid of heights, the hardest thing to do was to get in the car to start the ride. During Holy Week, we are invited to join Jesus on his walk into Jerusalem. From that initial call to a Holy Lent, where we began our walk with Jesus in the desert, we have been preparing for this moment. And it promises to be an emotional and spiritual roller coaster. Jesus will begin with the joy and affirmation of the crowd as they lay their palms and their cloaks before him and proclaim, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. During that week, he will teach in the temple and then share a powerful meal with his disciples on Monday, Thursday, in what we call the Last Supper. Jesus will wash their feet, but only after he has given them outward and visible signs of bread and wine that he will say are his body and blood. Christ's servanthood will be forever intertwined with the sacrifice of himself for the sins of the world. But then chaos ensues. Jesus is arrested after he has prayed in agony in the Garden of Gethsemane, where he asks God if there is another way, another plan that can be followed. But Jesus knows that he will be obedient to his Father, that he will not falter in his mission to redeem the world. He is put on trial by those who hate him, who feel threatened by his words and actions. They cannot or will not see that he is God's only Son, who has come not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. But the decision is final. He will be given to the Roman authorities, and in their fear of revolt and in their ignorance, they will do the unthinkable. They will crucify the Son of God. The roller coaster of Jesus' journey reaches its harshest dive when he is tortured, marched through the city of Jerusalem, and then nailed to the cross. He is mocked and spit upon. 
The Savior who never sinned feels the separation from God that sin causes when he cries out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then he dies. The hardest part of Holy Week is remembering that this is not the end of Jesus' journey. This is not the end of the Christian story. It is the seeds of the new beginning that God will create. The real end, the real triumph will come when God moves the stone, when life and glory are breathed into the broken body of his Son and the Savior returns. On Sunday morning, the church celebrates the joy and triumph of the resurrection. And if it can move a stone, if it can breathe life back into the Savior of the world, then imagine what it can do for you and I. On Sunday morning, we are reminded that while the scariest part of the ride is over, the best and the most exciting part is just beginning, living a resurrected life through, with, and in Jesus Christ. But first, we have to reach out and accept the extended hand that Jesus Christ himself gives to us to join him on this ride. It will be scary, but we can take comfort in knowing that he has been there before and that he will not let us falter or fail. All we have to do, though, is get in the car. As for the gospel, I'm asking you to read the gospel today. You yourselves, you have the reference to it. And so please read it because what I'm going to try to say to you is place yourself in the story. Do not read this as simply a historical thing that happened 2,000 years ago and so on. The question is, we, what position regarding all of this do you take? Do I take? Where were we in that crowd? I'm sure that at the beginning we were all Oh, hallelujah, the Savior has come, because who doesn't love a Savior, right? And so on. We throw our clothes out on the pathway so that Jesus can, can ride on them and so on. And oh my God, it's just a, such a wonderful experience. You might call it a mountaintop experience, except that the fact is that he was not on a mountaintop at that point. Nevertheless, emotionally, we are caught up in the moment. Speaking of being caught up in the moment, when Jesus disappoints many of the people who were proclaiming him and loving him and applauding him and, and casting branches, etc., etc., when he didn't kick out the Romans and he didn't usurp the powers of that be so that they could have the solution that they have wanted, they turned on him. The very same ones who were cheering turned on him. Uh, the question is, how do you and I do that? How do you and I exalt the name of Jesus on the one hand and then drive a nail on the other hand? Because you see, every time that we ignore our brethren or strangers or we walk by someone in need and avert our look so as not to meet their gaze and their pleading eyes we are the ones who are crucifying the christ we you and i are the ones i've told you before be careful what you say Amen to. In the collect, we prayed earnestly, I hope. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Now, we like that last part, to share in Jesus' resurrection. But are we really willing, able? Do we have the heart for doing the journey with Jesus? To go to the one who has no defense. To go to the one who needs love 
and who needs understanding. In fact, my friends, for many folks on this planet, just acceptance would be a great, great gift to them. So let's not kid ourselves, okay? Let's talk about this journey that God calls us to and that we have said we want to be on includes the pain, includes the discomfort, it includes the inconvenience, it includes the new, perhaps, way of thinking that you and I must adopt, must adopt, if we are to indeed follow him. He said, follow me, follow me. Where? Huh. To the cross and then beyond beyond death, beyond pain, beyond suffering. And we must attempt, my dear friends, to bring those who have no one to help them, to bring them with us, to love them through their pain and their anguish. Because you see, this is what the whole thing is about. God wants to unite with us. And in order for us to unite with God, we must stick it out. We must do it. We must. Our lives and the lives of those we love and the lives of those we don't even know yet are at stake here. The world is run over with evil and with harm and so on. And the antidote to that, my friend, is self-sacrificing love. Love. That's what it's about. Please say amen to that and then do it. Amen. Amen.